Hello and welcome to Hadoop Tutorials at Learning Journal. In this video, I want to cover fault tolerance and high availability features of Hadoop. Let's start with fault tolerance. Let me ask you a simple question. If some data node fails, what will happen to your file? I mean, your data file was broken into blocks and you stored them on different data nodes. If one of such data node is not working, how will you read your file? You can't read it, right? Because you lost some part of your file with that faulty machine. The Hadoop offers a very simple solution to this problem. Create a backup copy of each block and keep it on some other data node. That's it. If one copy is not available, you can read it from the second copy. In Hadoop's terminology, it is called replication factor. We can set replication factor on file to file basis and we can change it even after creating a file in HDFS. So, if I configure the replication factor of a file as 2, the HDFS will automatically make two copies of each block for this file. Hadoop will also ensure that it keeps these two copies on two different machines. We typically set the replication factor to 3. Making 3 copies is reasonably good. However, if your file is super critical, you can increase the replication factor to some higher value. Now, let's come back to our cluster architecture. Let's assume that we have 3 copies of the file on 3 different nodes as shown in the figure. You may ask a question, what will happen if the entire rack fails? All 3 copies are gone, isn't it? Hadoop offers a solution for this problem as well. You can configure Hadoop to become rack aware. Once you set rack awareness, Hadoop will ensure that at least one copy is placed in a different rack to protect you from rack failures. HDFS takes this replication factor seriously. I mean, if you set replication factor as 3, and HDFS created 3 copies as shown in the figure. Now, let's assume the one node fails. One failure leaves you with 2 copies. Another failure will leave you with just one copy. But you wanted HDFS to maintain 3 copies. We already know that each data node sends a periodic heartbeat to name node. Name node will soon discover that this particular data node is not sending heartbeat, so it must have failed. In such situations, name node will initiate a replication of the block and bring it back to three replicas. The point that I want to make is that the name node continually tracks the replication factor of each block and initiates replication whenever necessary. The necessity for re-replication may arise due to many reasons. A data node become unavailable, a replica become corrupted, a hard disk on a data node failed, or you increase the replication factor of a file. The sole purpose of replication is to provide you protection against failures. But it costs you a lot of space. Making 3 copies of your file reduces the storage capacity of your cluster by one third and increases the cost. Hadoop 2.x offers storage policies to minimize the cost and Hadoop 3.x provides eraser encoding as an alternative to replication. I will cover both of these features in a later video. However, replication is the traditional method for avoiding faults and cost concerns are not too high because disks are reasonably cheap. The next thing that I want to cover is high availability. Let me ask you some questions. What is high availability? If you don't know the answer, there is no point in learning high availability features in Hadoop. If you know high availability, can you explain how it is different than fault tolerance? Let me explain. 
you already know that high availability refers to the uptime of the system. It shows the percentage of time the service is up and operational. Every enterprise desires a 99.999% uptime for their critical systems. The faults that we discussed earlier like a data node failure or a disk failure or even for that matter a rack failure, those faults doesn't bring the entire system down. Your Hadoop cluster as a whole remains available. Some files may not be available due to those faults, but we learned that replication is the solution for those faults. So we already have protection against data node failures. What happens when the name node fails? We already learned that name node maintains the file system namespace. Name node is the only machine in Hadoop cluster that knows the list of directories and files. It also manages the file to block mapping. Every client interaction starts with name node. So if name node fails, we cannot use Hadoop cluster. We cannot read or write anything to the cluster. So the name node is a single point of failure in Hadoop cluster. To achieve high availability for a Hadoop cluster, we need to protect it against name node failures. The question is how to do it? The solution to protect yourself from any failure is the backup. That's it. In this case, we need to make a backup of two things. HDFS namespace information. All the information that a name node maintains should be continuously backed up at some other place. So that in the case of a failure, you have all the necessary information to start a new name node on a different machine. A standby name node machine, right? To minimize the time to start a new name node, we should already have a standby computer pre-configured and ready to take over the role of name node. Now let's come to the namespace information backup. We already learned that name node maintains the entire file system in memory and we call it in memory fs image. Name node also maintains an edit log in its local disk. Every time name node makes a change in the file system, it records that change in the edit log. The edit log is like a journal ledger of name node. If we have the edit log, we can reconstruct the in memory fs image. So, we need to make a backup of name node edit log. But the question is where and how? There are many options. But the best solution offered by Hadoop 2.x architecture is QJM. We call it Quorum Journal Manager. The QJM is a set of at least three machines. Each of these three devices is configured to execute a journal node daemon. Journal node is a very lightweight software so you can pick any three computers from your existing cluster. We don't need a dedicated machine for journal node. Once you have QJM, the next thing is to configure name node to write edit log entries to the QJM instead of writing it to the local disk. You might be wondering why do we have three journal nodes in a QJM. That gives us a double protection. The edit log is so critical that we don't want to back up at only one other place. That's why we have three. In case you need higher protection, you can have a QGM of five or seven nodes. That's all about making a backup of namespace information. Let's move to standby name node. So we add a new machine to the cluster and make it a standby name node. We also configure it to keep reading the edit log from the QGM and keep itself updated. This configuration makes standby ready to take up the active name node role in just a few seconds. There are two other important things in an active standby configuration. 
all the data nodes are configured to send the block report to both of the name nodes. We already know that block report is a kind of health information for the blocks maintained by the data node. The final question for the high availability configuration is how standby knows that active name node failed and it should take over the active name node role. We achieve this by placing a zookeeper and two failover controllers on each name node. The zookeeper failover controller of the active name node maintains a lock in zookeeper. The standby name node keeps trying to get the lock. But since active name node already maintains it, the standby never gets that lock. In case the active fails or crashes, the lock acquired by active name node expires and the standby succeeds to get a lock. That's it. As soon as standby gets the lock, it starts to transition from standby to active name node because it knows that active has failed. There is another component of HDFS which is worth mentioning at this point. Secondary name node. Secondary name node is often confused with standby name node. As I explained in this session, a standby is a backup for the name node. In the case of a name node failure, the standby should take over and perform name node responsibilities. However, secondary name node takes care of a different responsibility. Let me explain. We already learned about following two things. In-memory FS image and edit logs. The in-memory FS image is the latest and updated picture of the Hadoop file system namespace. The edit log is the persistent copy of all the changes made to the file system. Correct? Let me ask you a question. What will happen if you restart your name node? You may need to reboot the name node due to some maintenance activity. On restart, the name node will lose the FS image because it is an in-memory image, right? That shouldn't be a problem because we also have edit logs. The name node will read edit log and create a new FS image. There isn't any problem in this approach except one. The problem is with the time to read the edit log. The log keeps growing bigger and bigger every day. The size of log directly impacts the restart time for a name node. We don't want our name node to take an hour to start just because it is reading edit log and making a picture of the latest file system state. The secondary name node is deployed to solve this problem. The secondary name node performs a checkpoint activity every hour. During the checkpoint, the secondary name node will read the edit log, create the latest file system state and save it to disk. This state is exactly same as the in-memory FS image. We call it on-disk FS image. Once we have the on-disk FS image, the secondary name node will truncate the edit log because all the changes are already applied. Next time, I mean after an hour, the secondary name node will read the on-disk FS image and apply all the changes from the edit log that we accumulated during the last one hour. It will replace the old on-disk FS image with the new one and truncate the edit log once again. So the checkpoint activity is nothing but a merging of an on-disk FS image and edit log. The checkpoint doesn't take much time because we have just an hour old edit logs to apply to the on-disk FS image. The time to read FS image is short because the FS image is small compared to the edit log. And I hope you understand the reason. The edit log is like a journal ledger that records every transaction. The FS image is like a balance sheet that shows the final state. 
so the fs image is small okay so in the case of a restart the name node also performs the same checkpoint activity that it can finish in a very short time i hope you understand this process the whole purpose of secondary name node and checkpoint is to minimize the restart time for the name node the secondary name node service is not required when we implement hadoop high availability configuration in that case the standby name node also performs the checkpoint activity and hence we don't need secondary name node in high availability configuration okay i talked about various hdfs architecture features and try to explain how they work a good understanding of architecture and functionalities take you a long way in design and implementing efficient solutions the actual setup and configuration specifics are for admin and operations people since our focus is for developer and architect we skip those things however i will cover some basics of installation and configuration in following videos thank you for watching learning journal please like subscribe and share to support us keep learning and keep growing